Thanks for the introduction. This work was developed in collaboration with professors Francisco Ferrante and Ricardo Sanfelice. So the main goal of this work is to characterize feedback optimal control loads for the street time systems in the presence of these surfaces. Consider a cost functional J that depends on an initial condition G and input actions. We want to find the input controller U phi that minimizes the, the functional in the presence of a disturbance action W phi subject to discrete dynamics, such that the state after each jump is given by a map G of the state, the input and the controller and the disturbance when those three are found instead of a playable set. We are interested in the case in which the disturbance seeks to maximize the cost and we want to solve the game in the mid-max sense as a feedback law while finding connections between optimality and stability. After presenting a brief introduction, we want to set the problem as a zero-sum game and then present our results in cost evaluations and game theoretical tools, finally with an application to an inverted pendulum. So game theory has been broadly studied with application and connections to dynamical systems in the non-cooperative case, also for continuous time systems as dif differential game theory with connections to the open of theory. And when finding solutions as optimal feedback loads, it has been studied non quadratic nonlinear problems and constraint differential equations in which dynamics are defined by set value maps. In the presence of disturbances, connections has been presented to Lyapunov theory and also ap applications of game theory uh, in continuous time systems, but it hasn't been studied non complete solutions nor discrete time systems. So, um, Let's consider our difference uh, equation Hg and our cost functional j in terms of a stage cost Qd. Phi, u phi w phi is the solution to our discrete system Hg from our initial condition G. And the first problem we want to solve is given an initial condition and input actions, we want to compute the value of the cost without computing the solution. What is the problem here? Solutions can be computed in general. So we build up an Aliapunov approach to avoid it. The second problem we want to solve is set this optimization problem as a zero-sum game in which uh, the settled point equilibrium wants to be found when the actions are assigned by step feedback loss by each player. So our first result uh, requires us to define the projection of the playable set in the steady space and we'll call it pi of d and if this condition holds in terms of a uh, function b that maps to real and the stage cost and if the solution to the discrete time system hg from g is such that b compose phi that is the response is bounded then we have the following upper bound on the cost in terms of b evaluated at the initial condition and the final value of the response. Let us analyze this condition a little more so. Assume that during this point, you evaluate V at that point. And if you evaluate the next point given by the jump and evaluate V in that point, what this condition is telling us is that the difference between these two points has to be in magnitude at least equal to QD. Moreover, if V is uniformly continuous in a neighborhood of calligraph A, a closed set, and V evaluated in that set is uh, vanishes and the response to the system converges in the limit to the set calligraph A, then the bound can be evaluated as a solution independent state statement. So the second term in the previous bound vanishes. Um, in the case in which our solution holds with a, an equal sign um, and phi U phi and W phi are still such that V composing the response phi is bounded, then the cost obeys an exact bound that we can calculate in terms of our function V. If V is uniformly continuous in the neighborhood of our closed set and V vanishes in this set, and again, the response converges in the limit to our closed set, calligraph A, then we can exactly evaluate the cost and it will be equal to V of the initial condition that actually is the cost to go. So the second problem we have has a challenge and is basically that solutions are not necessarily complete 
due to the constraint here, the playable set D, because solutions can jump outside of it and stop evolving. So we want to analyze the case in which W phi is determined by the player that aims to maximize the cost, and U phi is determined by the player that seeks to minimize it. Let us consider variations in which we define those strategies of each player by feedback loss theta and C. And we say that when both players play optimally, uh, that system will be called H and its corresponding cost will be J. When the controller doesn't necessarily play optimally, we refer to the system as HC and its cost JC. And when the disturbance doesn't necessarily play optimally, we call that system H theta and its cost J theta. So we say that if there exists functions theta and C and functions B and stage cost QD such that our function, our equation holds for when both players play optimally as, a, as an equality. And when the controller doesn't necessarily play optimally, this equation will be in the negative. And when the disturbance doesn't necessarily play optimally, it is non positive. We call these three equations at the discrete Hamilton, Jacobi, Bellman, Isaacs equation for sure, discrete Isaacs equation. If they hold, and if the solution to the closed loop system, is such that B composed phi is bounded, then the cost is finite and we can exactly evaluate it in terms of our function B. In addition, if the solutions to the variations of the system are such that uh, B composed in the response of each of the variations is bounded and this bound holds at the final value of each of the responses, we can find a relationship between the cost of each of these variation of the systems. And this condition doesn't require solutions to be complete. So let us define these two sets. UC is the set of control actions uh, such that when the disturbance play optimally, yield the system to solutions that converge to close to the value of A. And W theta is the set of disturbances such that when the control player plays optimally, yield solutions that uh, converge to the close to calligraph A. We say that the pair of feedback is a settled point and these two sets for the proposed game if the cost of a closed loop system is smaller than or equal to the cost when the controller doesn't necessarily play optimally and it is greater than or equal to the cost when the disturbance doesn't necessarily um, play optimally. So based on this, uh, we say that if B is uniformly continuous in a neighborhood of our closed set and it vanishes in the set and our discrete Isaac's equation holds. And if theta and C are such that the set of control and the certain action that yield solutions that converge to the closed set A, calligraph A, are not empty. And if the unique solution to the closed loop system from G converges to the closed set calligraph A, then the cost will be exactly evaluated as B of the initial condition. This is the cost of the closed loop system. In addition, it is a saddle point based on um, the previous defined properties. Uh, in the case in which the stage cost is positive definite when both players play optimally with respect to the closed calligraph A, and if for each initial condition, the maximum solution of the closed loop system is complete, and if B uh, is, is bounded, by functions k infinity alpha one and alpha two, as in this condition, and b vanishes in the set calligraph A and the discrete Isaac's equation holds, then for each initial condition in the projection of the playable set in the steady space, we have that the cost will be exactly evaluated at b of the initial condition and it is a saddle point. Let us present an application to the inverted pendulum. After linearizing and discretizing the model, we can express it in terms of matrices A and B1. And when we have additive noise W in the input, and this, the, play, the point that we want to stabilize is the upper equilibrium point, and the feedback loads are defined in terms of matrices K1 and K2. And the, the stage cost is the classical quadratic cost in terms of Q and R2. We want to find the settle point equilibrium of the game. So let us define V as a quadratic uh, function in terms of P and D the playable set in terms of constraints on the input and the state. The variations when one of or both players play optimally are presented at the bottom of the slide. 
And if we have parameters such that the discrete Isaac's equation presented here holds and B compose phi is bounded, uh, then we can evaluate exactly the case and that's the case uh, for the parameters presented at the bottom. K1 and K2 are such that QD is positive definite when both players play optimally. And for each optima, for each initial condition in pi of D, the maximal solution is complete and converges to calligraph A. We find our K infinity functions alpha one, alpha two in terms of the eigenvalues of the matrix P, then B of G is the saddle point value and the feedback loads are the cell point equilibrium for the game, which can be visualized for a specific initial condition and some variations of the gains in the matrices in this figure. So we address the optimal control problem for constraint difference equations with disturbances as a zero sum game. We presented cost evolution results, laying and conditions over the optimal like functions, and we characterize the cell point equilibrium for the game. Under some additional conditions, we warranty asymptotic stability of a closet. Something important is that this approach doesn't require dynamics to be linear, nor the running cost to be quadratic. And we plan to extend these results to the optimal control problems for hybrid inclusions in the presence of disturbances. Thank you so much for listening, and please let me know if you have any questions.